everybody, I have answered this question probably hundreds of times um, in emails, in YouTube comments, in several YouTube videos, but it seems that people are still not really understanding this concept. If you say to me that you are starting with, say, a, a 30 inch waist and you would like to waist train with a corset and eventually get to a natural 24 inch waist with the corset on, how long is that going to take? The answer is, I don't know. I do not know. I don't know. Please stop asking me. I can't even approximate a, a certain amount of time that it will take for you. Neither can anybody else for that matter. And if somebody on the internet is telling you how long it will take definitively for you to lose a certain amount of inches within a certain amount of time, I gotta tell you, they are lying. But why is this? The semi-permanent results of waist training is dependent on a number of factors, including your body's current state and your genetic predisposition. It depends on the quality of the corset and its compatibility with your body. It depends on the way that you train in your corset. So let's break this down into several different sections, starting with the first one, your body. What is your body fat percentage? Adipose tissue can immediately compress down a lot more than, say, muscle in a corset, but it also bounces back once you remove the corset. Some people have a high body fat percentage and they're able to cinch down even 10 inches in the waist, while somebody with a very low body fat percentage might be able to only cinch down 2 or 3 inches. But also, what's your weight distribution? Do you tend to carry more weight in your belly or do you tend to carry more weight on your hips and thighs? If you do carry more weight on your belly, do you have a lot of visceral fat or do you have more subcutaneous fat? Subcutaneous fat is the malleable, sort of movable tissue right underneath your skin and over your abdominal muscle. If your skin is typically a little soft, you probably have more subcutaneous fat. With visceral fat, it's situated actually underneath the muscle and in between your organs. So the skin over your belly might be sort of tight as a drum. Maybe you have a little bit of definition in your ab muscles, but it still doesn't negate the fact that that metabolically active adipose tissue is already manipulating your organs underneath that muscle, even without the corset on. So somebody with more subcutaneous fat, even over their tummy, will probably have an easier time lacing down than somebody who has more visceral body fat. Moving on to muscle tone, how toned are your abdominal muscles? Very toned, dense muscles may be more difficult to cinch down compared to less toned muscles. But if you time your workouts well, you can actually use your resistance exercise regimen to your advantage in waist training to change the morphology of your oblique muscles right here on the sides and have them almost heal or grow into the hourglass shape encouraged by the corset. I have a video that goes into more detail about corsets and muscles and I will link it right over here. Also, once you get to higher reductions, you have to stretch these side muscles almost as if you're doing a side stretch. Also, the tendons and ligaments in these areas have to be stretched as well. Some people's bodies seem to more readily accommodate this compared to other people's bodies. What is your skeletal frame like? Do you have a wider rib cage or a smaller rib cage? Are your ribs very flexible and are you able to accommodate corsets that have a conical rib cage easily or do you not? Some people who are easily able to train their ribs and who have very flexible ribs are more likely to see faster waist training results compared to those whose ribs are very rigid or inflexible. Also, how old are you? More mature waist trainers have bones that are not only less dense, but less malleable compared to younger trainers, say, in their 20s. Also consider your organs. When you look at a human anatomy textbook, you're seeing the general average of size and orientation of organs, but not everybody's organs look like that. Some people have larger organs, some people have slightly smaller organs, some people even have a slightly different orientation of organs. Not vastly different, but even a variation of say 10% might make a huge difference in how your body can accommodate a corset. What's your water content like? If you're often bloated or you have water retention either due to your lifestyle or because of a medical condition, then you not only won't be able to lace down as much or as readily, but you have more of that temporary squish as opposed to having your corset wearing contribute to long-term training. Have you had a baby or been pregnant before or not? It seems that women who have been pregnant or given birth before are on average able to lace down more readily or in the very least more comfortably at a higher reduction compared to those who have not had a baby before. Maybe this has to do with the fact that your baby has moved around your organs or the relaxant in your system during pregnancy had stretched out some of those tendons and ligaments already, or maybe you're just accustomed to the restriction and the, the moving around, not bending at the waist, or breathing up higher in your chest, so perhaps with your experience being pregnant before, you are just psychologically more comfortable with the concept and the feeling of wearing a corset. 
The next factor we'll consider is your corset. Does your corset fit you properly? Is it comfortable? When you're lacing down, is it just reducing the waist area? And is it lying flat and gently supporting your upper rib cage or your hip area? Or is the corset overall not curvy enough? Is it giving you massive muffin top? Is it pinching your hips? Or is it causing any lower tummy pooch to spill out underneath? A good fitting corset is not only going to be more effective at shaping, but it's also worlds more comfortable. So you'll be encouraged to wear it, which wearing your corset for longer hours also makes waist training more effective. Is your corset strong enough? Does it hold up to tension without buckling? Are the seams securely stitched? Are the bones creating the proper scaffold and not digging into your body? Are the grommets holding in? Having to put your waist training on hold, not because you want to, but because your corset is breaking every two months and you have to replace it each time, that's not cost effective and that's not time effective. So if you're in this for the long haul and you're looking to waist train for months or years in order to gain a permanent or semi-permanent change in your figure, invest in something that's going to last. Invest in something that's strong and custom and will pay for itself over the years. Is the corset the right silhouette to do what you want it to do? I personally find that a rounded rib cage like this one is most comfortable for me, but I personally don't waist train to see a permanent reduction in my waist. I simply like the challenge of being able to close a certain corset eventually. But if you do want to train your rib cage, then you might need more of a conical rib cage, one that sort of tapers down. Getting a corset with a gentle sloping silhouette, uh, it will probably not give you the effect that you want. For instance, uh, you can't put a square peg through a round hole and expect a triangle to come out. If you want a certain silhouette outside of your corset, you have to accommodate a certain silhouette inside a corset. Lastly, let's consider your lifestyle habits and your method of training. Are you exercising along with your waist training? Like I said earlier, adding or increasing your core resistance training can actually help you see results faster by encouraging your muscles here to heal in a certain way. Even if you have no intention of losing weight and you only want to see a change in your natural silhouette without the corset on, exercise is still good for you. If you don't exercise and you don't do core training, then your middle might become a little bit more squishy and you might not hold that permanent hourglass shape as well as if you were combining waist training with resistance core training. Also, how are you eating? Are you eating clean? Are you getting enough fiber so that you can stay regular? Are you avoiding foods that you know can cause bloating and discomfort when you're wearing your corset? Are you having regular small balanced meals or are you say fasting all day and then having a huge feast every evening when you're so hungry you can't stop yourself? Wearing a corset or waist training is never ever supposed to be a substitute for proper diet and exercise. Are you staying hydrated? Are you getting lots of clean water or tea? Are you keeping your electrolytes balanced? This ties into how much water you might be retaining if you're having a lot of sugar and salt and your body can't get rid of it fast enough. Are you watching your blood pressure, which also relates to your blood volume? Do you take in a lot of caffeine or other diuretics? And if you do, then are you making sure that you're getting enough water to balance out those diuretics? How often are you wearing your corset and for what duration each day? And also at what reduction? To get the best results in a corset, you kind of have to use it. So what method of waist training do you choose to use? There is the roller coaster method that was created by Anne Grogan of Romanticy. There's the cycle method described by Fran Blanche of Contour Corsets. Some people might use a combination of both and some people might just try a different waist training method altogether that works for them. Some people consider waist training as just wearing their corset for eight hours a day while they're out working. Others might only waist train by wearing a corset only to bed at night. Some people wear their corsets 12 or 16 hours a day and a few really dedicated ones wear their corset 23 hours a day. When I was waist training with intent, I found it sufficient to wear my corset between eight and 12 hours a day, probably five to six days a week. Um, I didn't find that I needed to go any more than that and I found that if I did go more than that, then it just wasn't enjoyable to me anymore. I believe Straight Lace Dame also uh, reported a similar effect and those people who do train 23 hours a day, although they're dedicated is very admirable. I don't necessarily condone it and um, I don't feel that most people need to go quite that much with their waist training but of course the choice is always yours. But when it comes to the hours that you're spending in your corset remember that the body responds best to consistency. 
For reasons that I'll explain in a future video, you'll probably see more results if you corset at a light or moderate reduction for long hours, as opposed to, say, tight lacing your corset for one or two hours and then not wearing it for a couple of days. So let's compare waist training to an exercise program. In a video coming up, I'm going to touch on the corset diet, but for now, I'm just going to use a general infomercial for an exercise program as a metaphor. So asking me how many inches you'll lose by waist training or how long it will take to lose a specific number of inches is kind of like asking me specifically how much weight or fat you're going to lose with a certain exercise or specifically how much muscle mass you're going to build and how quickly. Well, how often are you doing the exercise? Are you using full intensity or are you uh, just kind of going through the motions? Are you being safe and sane about this or are you pushing yourself too far almost to the point of injury? What's your current body like? How does it respond to the exercise? Are you conditioned for cardio? Um, even the number of, say, fast twitch and slow twitch fibers in your muscles can have an effect on um, how efficient you become at the exercise. Many exercise programs, they have claims that you can lose up to 20 pounds per month, just as a general example, but you read the small print and you realize those results are not typical. That is the exception. Those are the exceptional people who had better results than most people. And the exact same thing applies to corsetry and waist training as well. Anne Grogan, who's a corset coach, is able to confidently say that within a three-month waist training program, you're likely to see noticeable results in your natural waist with proper compliance to the program because it covers a lot of different factors. The type of corset you're using, the reduction, the number of hours, the foods you eat, the exercises you do, and keeping a journal to keep track of all of these different factors. But there's also still the variable of your body's readiness to accommodate the corset it, which also ties into your other daily habits, but also your genetic predisposition. All of these also play a factor. So even with all of these other areas controlled, with perfect compliance, you still can't precisely predict how many inches you'll lose or how quickly. So in summary, you have a natural 36 inch waist, you're looking at corsets for waist training. How long will it take you to get to a natural 28 inch waist? The answer? I have no clue. All that I do know is that Patience and persistence are key, as well as enjoying the process, enjoying the ride and uh, the experience of course of training, and not focusing specifically on the end result. Someday you might get there. I'll see you guys in the next video.